The Primus presents how South Korea demolished a freeway to restore an ancient river system into a green oasis. This downtown green space in Seoul was once a looming, congested, elevated freeway, but the city decided to get rid of this freeway to revive an ancient river. The capital and largest city of South Korea, i.e. Seoul, has a population of more than 10 million, which is why it is regarded as a megacity. With 26 million inhabitants, Seoul is the fifth largest city in the world and has the third largest metropolitan population in Asia. Due to the capital's area location on a plain in the valley of the Han River, Seoul has been continually inhabited for more than 2,000 years. As a result, it has some of the most fertile territories in the Korean peninsula, albeit only a tiny portion of it is currently exploited for farming. As electrical infrastructure development, railroads, streetcar tracks, parks, water systems, schools, and hospitals got underway around the end of the 19th century. The foundation for the modern-day Seoul started to take shape. Seoul hosted around 1 million people in the 1950s. By the turn of the century, that number had multiplied by 10. As a result, Seoul faced significant urban problems during the 1960s and 1970s due to a large influx of people, including traffic congestion, environmental pollution, the creation of illegal settlement sites, and a lack of housing. However, Seoul has turned this around in under 50 years by addressing various urban issues to improve and evolve into an intelligent metropolis where 10 million people can live happily and is regarded as one of the greenest megacities in the world, with 27.80% public parks and gardens. This is why it can be viewed as a significant achievement for any city, but especially for Seoul, the seventh most populous city in the world. In comparison, only 7.5% of Tokyo consists of green spaces, despite having less than half the population density of Seoul City. The story of Cheongikcheon started hundreds of years ago, during the reign of the Hyosian Dynasty, when the kingdom's castle was considered the head of Seoul, and the river the body. That was its glorious past, making the Cheongikcheong River restoration one of the most successful urban green megaprojects in the world. Let's dive into all the events that led to the successful completion and how a new traffic model was prepared that accommodated around 168,000 cars per day. The Cheonggi Creek, which flowed through a rapidly urbanized Seoul, was covered by an elevated expressway in 1968, obscuring the remnants of the city's old coastline. In addition, the freeway was crowded with vehicles as the economy grew. As a result, the Cheonggi neighborhood recorded the city's most unusual noise and traffic levels three decades later. The people concluded that the motorway needed to be removed to alleviate the situation, and this notion came from an unlikely source. Later on, Lee myung bak won the 2001 election for mayor of Seoul thanks to a campaign that included promises to tear down the expressway and restore Cheonggi Creek to make Seoul a hub of Northeast Asia. myung bak the previous CEO of Hyundai Engineering and Construction, had the vision to draw in tourists, foreign organizations, and business investments. Overwhelming public support for the motorway project was evidenced by the fact that approximately 80% of Seoul citizens backed the Myung proposal. He received high acceptance ratings as mayor of Seoul thanks to his plan's prompt and aggressive implementation. Government authorities also decided to finish the project as soon as possible, since they realized that delayed implementation would increase costs and cause businesses to suffer. Additionally, the city's government wanted the first stage of restoration to be finished within one mayoral term, due to the politically sensitive nature of the project. As a result, the first stage of restoration scope concentrated on more constrained goals, such as the riverbed and publicly held lands. Myung Bak was able to capitalize on this achievement at the national level and was elected president of South Korea in 2008. After the highway was demolished in 2005, a 9 kilometer green swath was created in the middle of the city by an artificial creek that currently runs in its stead. The city has attracted wealthy, educated professionals and people who value the feeling of a natural environment in an urban setting by creating green corridors around the rediscovered canal. The demolition has helped Seoul's tourism industry as well. According to Time Magazine, the stream now receives 500,000 visitors per week, making it among the most well-liked tourist destination in South Korea. Cheonggi Creek's enormous success has sped up related projects. After the Cheonggi Freeway was dismantled, over 15 expressways in Seoul were also removed. The city's management is currently interested in making more lanes for bikes and reviving the tram system, and demolishing freeways are also helping in those domains. Environmentalists have mentioned a plethora of additional advantages of this activity. Flooding rains are handled better by open waterways than by underground sewers. The neighborhood near Cheonggi Creek 
had a 3.3 degrees Celsius drop in average summer temperatures due to the removal of the expressway, which also transformed adjoining streets. The city left a few columns of the elevated highway that once ran over the river as a reminder, which was a nice way to wrap up this project. With that, it is time for us as well to wrap up today's video. If you have anything to say about this project, feel free to say it in the comment section down below. If you like this video, consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends as well. Until then, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.